Good morning, America. How are you? This is Justin back with an Engineer's Perspective, and I'm going to do a little uh, sharpening and initial impressions of this guy right here. This is a Veneve Industrial Diamonds uh, diamond resin bonded stone. Um, so these can be had at gridomatic.com. I've been testing this one. I think this is their Centaur series, which is just the small here. Uh, I've been testing this one for a little over a year. And uh, there's things I uh, like and dislike about it, but mostly like. But I was ready to pull the trigger and upgrade. So I think this is 1x6. This is 3x8. Um, but yeah, pull the trigger and upgrade. Uh, really quick. So this stone here is dual grit, two-sided. The tan for this stone, so it's different with this one, but the tan here is a 400F, that's FEPA, and that's a different standard than like the GIST, which is Japanese industrial, which is what Japanese water stones are in, or ANSI, which is what um, like the uh, work sharp abrasives are in. So just keep that in mind. So 400F, <clears throat> which roughly correlates to a thousand or so grit um, uh, Japanese industrial standard so 400 F about a thousand then 800 which is about I don't know 1200 to you know 1500 pushing 2000 but this stone is of the lower diamond concentration so what does that mean um, it means that <clears throat> the company Veneve has determined kind of a, a maximum or ideal amount of diamond per volume of resin to put into there. And uh, that maximum number, I believe, and this is from Scott Gunn, go watch Scott Gunn's uh, channel, uh, Gunny's Sharp Talk. He's a genius, knows a bunch of stuff. I believe he'd said it was like 3.3 micrograms per cubic centimeter of resin is the concentration of diamonds in here. That's like the 100%. Um, whereas in this stone here, it's at 25% of that. So a quarter of that, maybe it's 4.4 micrograms. So there's 1.1 micrograms per centimeter or per CC in here. And uh, I just got it because it's cheap. I wanted to try it out. What you get from this stone is it's very smooth. It's very polishy and it's very good at burr, burr removal reduction and removal, but it is not aggressive, like at all. Um, so having this stone and uh, liking it, especially for those little bit higher end finishes, I went and bought this one. And this one is different with the colors. This red side is a 400 F and the back side is a 240 F. Um, so the 400 once again is 800 to a thousand, the 240, I don't know, 400 to 600 probably, uh, probably 400 maybe. I have, this is initial impression, so you know I can't compare it to like what it actually does quite yet. I have sharpened once on it, but um, this is 100% diamond concentration. So this has four times the diamonds that this does. And the one sharpening I've done on it, it is completely different, so. That's the what I will eventually talk to more once I've got a little bit more time on the stone. Yeah, totally different between this 400 here and this here. The 100% concentration is way more aggressive. It's much faster cutting. The finish it leaves is way more um, like satiny versus this is very polished. Yeah, it's, it's way different. Get my sip of coffee in here. Oh god, that's good. Yeah, completely different uh, things going on between the two. So, actually we'll go back this way. So I just wanted to do, so that's kind of the intro, and I wanted to do an initial sharpening. Woo, making a mess for you guys here. So, both of these have the OCB binder in it which is an abrasive binder. And in this stone, the 400F, I believe has the OCB, whereas the 800 has their, I just O, I think, or B, whatever it is, I don't know what it stands for. 
It's a non-abrasive binder, so it's meant for more polishing. They might even, I'm pretty sure this 400 has the OCB. But both of these have the OCB, so we've got a more aggressive binder. That's still hard, still doesn't release. But more aggressive binder um, and way more diamonds and then a lower grip with this 240. And it comes in this little pouch here that says stuff in Russian or Polish or something, lots of numbers. I don't know, you can take it or leave it, I guess. What do I got? All right, here we go. And we've got a crew wear, reground crew wear Manix 2 here that we're gonna sharpen on this bad boy. And, uh, excuse me, just give you my initial impressions. I haven't sharpened in quite a while because of, you know, got a one month old, turned one month yesterday. So I've been kind of, you know, doing, doing dad and stuff, but I'm shooting for in the ballpark of 15-ish. I'm just trying to feel kind of the feedback that this thing is given, or lack thereof. I'm not expecting a lot of feedback. Just getting up to the plunge grind here. Take a look. Oh, I'm going pretty low here. It's probably too low. I'm gonna have a nasty looking edge at the end of this. But that 400F stone it was so you know non-aggressive that I wouldn't really apex any knife on it maybe if you had like 1095 then this could be their first stone but it was just so so chill that I, I wouldn't apex a steel on it It'd never be my first stone I think we've about apexed this crew wear. Because, yeah, if you started on that 400F, what you would end up with generally was a knife that wouldn't see its full potential because you wouldn't fully apex. So that's why I got the 240 400. Because a lot of the time, the 400 was good enough of a finish for what I wanted. this spot a little bit more but the 400 was a good enough finish but it was never um, enough for me <clears throat> oh my word excuse me it was never enough for me in terms of aggression or uh, speed speed of cutting so that's why I went with the 240 here and it is a lot faster it doesn't feel like it's you know just gripping and ripping it I'll tell you that much but it's it's moving steel, no doubt. Very satiny finish there, kind of an yeah, just a satin finish. That doesn't look super coarse or anything. The stone doesn't feel gritty, but it doesn't feel nearly as smooth as uh as the other one did that diamond concentration is night and day maybe it's the ocb maybe I'd, that makes a difference that's yeah, a much grittier feeling stone feedback i mean you can feel it's cutting there's there's, it doesn't just feel like it's skating over glass, so there's that. I 
I'm thinking a lot, a lot, a lot about deburring and uh, micro burrs and things of that nature of late. And kind of what do my sharpening methods result in? And I'm, I'm confident in my sharpening methods, especially the light passes. Because some people are all about the, the edge leading only. And I'm not disagreeing, but they're like, you know, it's gotta be edge leading. That's the only way to deburr. If you edge lead, you'll have a clean apex. Boom. But I just, I sit there and think and I'm like, well, when I sit and sharpen on this, all I do are edge leading. And you know what it generates? A burr. So to think that if you do an edge leading stroke, that'll only deburr and not generate burr, I think is ridiculous. So, I mean, there's, there's more to it than, oh, if you go edge leading, you get you get a clean apex. I think there's yeah, more, more to that story. Right now I'm just kind of doing the light passes. Yeah, this 240 is pretty aggressive. I like that. Doesn't seem crazy aggressive, but it's, it's definitely, uh, I don't want to say for sure, but it's reminiscent of a newer DMT fine stone. I don't, I don't think you could move steel quite that fast with it, but. Because when I do the light passes, you draw out the burr, in theory, cut it off. Draw out, cut. Draw out, cut. Draw out, cut. So that way you're never crushing it. If you if you go straight to edge leading, you're never crushing it. Because you flip it, cut it off. Flip it, cut it off. So you never crush it and ruin that apex when you do it that way. But you're still, you're not just drawing it out into a foil. And what I find in terms of how the actual edge width of it feels is that this way is you're kind of refining the apex here and cutting it off. So I feel like if you do these type of strokes versus just edge leading, you get a slightly smaller edge apex. Okay, so we're poorly hair shaving, very poorly. Yeah, I won't cut, really cut paper towel. I've still got a pretty raggedy edge on there. I'll catch on the fingernail. I will definitely catch on the fingernail. I mean, I can feel the burr. I am going to just flop over to the 400 side because I don't feel like taking forever, but normally I'll do a little bit more deburring. So, but what I'm noting there is that that uh, 240 is aggressive and coarse. That's kind of what where my mind's at is that's a coarse stone, man. The, that 240. And that's why it's kind of generating that burr on the edge leading. So I, I'm not going to go back. I would not recommend an edge leading finishing stroke on the 240. It's too aggressive. Same goes for DMT fine. Don't recommend it. So still kind of a gritty stone, the 400F here. Light pressure here. But smoother than the, than the 240. I can feel it gripping in less, still is though. So there's a little bit of feedback going on here. I 
Let's check. Oh, rather pretty satin. Let's come up. Oh, yeah, that's what these veneers do. Is they're, they'll leave a satin finish. The these more polishy centered ones will give you a polish because the satin will just turn into a polish. I mean, a good satin will reflect. But like these will leave, you know, lined up scratches on the edge versus if you have a lot of slurry on the stone, it'll kind of polish them in that rolling action that, um, that really evens it out and doesn't leave the lines. Uh, there's definitely some inconsistencies in my finish, but we'll see if we can get those out later. I'm just trying not to crush that burr. Get one more of those guys. Light pressure, especially as I get going here. Yeah, there's feedback on this. This is night and day better than uh, DMT plates or any diamond plate for that matter in terms of feel. So if you're looking for that sort of experience, then this is definitely the way to go. And I'm really impressed with how, how much of a metal mover that 240 F OCB bound 100% diamond was moving that that thing can move some steel pretty decently especially for just apexing this is crew wear granted but it's decent hardness it's decent carbide volume 12 percent or so 12 and a half a little bit of vanadium carbide in there so it's not nothing light passes especially right now if it was any lighter it wouldn't touch the stone flip the burr you can see that burr drawn out oh, I hear my wife coming I hope she isn't coming to see to give me some time to finish this. Hopefully the kiddo is still sleeping. Trying to get this baby D bird. So initial impressions that 240 grit, very aggressive. Definitely good for uh, setting that initial bevel. Don't know if I would reprofile anything crazy on it, but we'll have to try with some other steels, you know. So I can still feel a little bit of burr on there. I'm just gonna draw draw that burr out a little bit with some straps and try to chop that baby off. Draw. Ah, I'm I want to practice just using my right hand. I'm just not gonna do it on video because ambidextrous is probably the better way to know. <clears throat> but. Ah, what the heck. But, uh, sometimes it's nice to be able to do this right here. One-handed, just a little bit faster. You're not... You're not mucking up your knife when you're changing hands really fast and you get stone swarf up in the pivot area. <clears throat> Excuse me. So now it's very hair shavy. 
very sharp for certain. We'll catch on the fingernail. And we'll cut the paper towel. So I'm just gonna do one of these guys. to do that edge leading burr cutting off action. And in my opinion, if you finish with that edge leading, you're increasing the width of your edge apex. So I wanna feather that down a touch without forming a burr. So I'm just gonna do a couple strops on that stone there. Use a little more of the straps. So yeah, overall, I think that 240 is exactly what I was looking for <clears throat> in terms of being able to do that initial bevel setting. And I think this 400 F OCB 100% is a little bit more aggressive than I was looking for. It's like a 50% concentration maybe. Um, but overall, like the stone, I think it was a good, good upgrade. Um, in my diamond sharpening. So I'm excited to see where it brings me in the future. So that's, uh, sorry, I'm just dropping on this guy. All I've got is like three-ish passes per side. Very, very sharp. Shaves hairs without contacting skin. Very, very sharp edge. So that's all I've got for you guys. I'll be doing more sharpening on this and I'll let you know. But that's all I got for now. Thanks for watching. Bye.